Okay, so for this class, we'll be talking a lot about symmetry. It's a really useful tool for understanding how um, in a molecule, the symmetry of the molecule dictates uh, its bonding, spectroscopy, energies, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you have seen this before in organic chemistry when we talked about NMR spectroscopy, for example. So if you remember, benzene has six different protons, but only one NMR signal, uh, by proton NMR spectroscopy at least. Um, and then so that's, this is because, of course, although you have six different protons, E, F, these are all related by symmetry. So because they, be, they can be related by symmetry, then you only see that one signal because they're all equivalent. Um, so for this class, being able to more um, quantitatively identify the symmetry of each molecule is going to be really critical. So today we'll be talking a little bit about those. Um, so for uh, our purpose of the class, um, the thing we'll be talking about a lot is symmetry operations. So symmetry operation, this is uh, when you transform a molecule Um, to an orientation equivalent to the original. So for example, with this benzene, um, there's a lot of ways to relate the different hydrogens. Um, so, for example, if we rotated this 180 degrees, this one would move down here, and then it would still be equivalent because benzene is just like this hexagon. Um, there's lots of other operations that we could do um, that could still relate benzene to itself. Um, on the other hand, when you perform the operation, you perform it about what's called a symmetry element. And then, so the symmetry element would, is... Um, a point, a line, or a plane, or plane about which we do the symmetry operations with respect to symmetry operation. So in the example above, if I were to rotate this benzene molecule 180 degrees uh, going, let's say, um, rotating this way, if you can follow my finger, um, we're rotating this about a line perpendicular to this screen. So that's what's called the symmetry element about which we are performing this rotation operation. And then so the goal of this class and the next uh, couple lectures is going to be able to identify in a molecule what symmetry elements are there, and then from there how we can use them uh, to uh, you know, transform the molecules themselves. Okay, so let's go through a couple examples. Um, let me quickly erase. So we'll talk a little bit about the major types of symmetry operations uh, and also when to identify their symmetry elements. So the first symmetry element that every molecule has is the identity. And I don't know if you'll consider this an actual symmetry operation, but if you don't do anything to the molecule, it stays in the same orientation. So we refer to this as the E operation. So identity operation, if we take this benzene molecule, don't do anything to it, a stays with A, D stays with D, it's still symmetric to itself. So every molecule has this. So every molecule has this. Um, okay, the second most common symmetry element is rotation. So this is. And then uh, the, the notation here for when you have a rotation symmetry element is that you have what's called a C axis. So C and then sub N. And then this is where N is going to be uh, pi over N rotation. So for example, if we rotate, uh, let's actually no, okay. If we take the benzene, if you rotate A to D, 
That's what's called a C2 because we're rotating by 180 degrees, aka we're rotating by pi radians, so 2 pi over 2. That's therefore C2. Um, so as another example, if we take water, let's see, here's water. Okay, so water has two hydrogens, HA and HB. So you could imagine rotating it down this axis. So here, we could then rotate about this axis, and then A would, be, would go to B, and then so this is what's called the C2 axis. C2, because again, we're rotating by 180 degrees. If, on the other hand, we take, let's say, boron trifluoride. So boron trifluoride is planar. So we're looking, again, down this. Uh, so this is the, the planar. So it's in plane to the board right now. So you could imagine uh, rotating it. Uh, we can rotate, sorry. So we have FA, FB, FC. We could rotate by 120 degrees, A to B, B to C, et cetera. And then so I'll denote this as, um, as this triangle. Right? So this is the rotational axis into the board. So this is going to be what's called a C3. So we rotate C3. Um, also point out one thing is uh, boron trifluoride has other rotational axes too. For example, you could then think about, let me draw this in, let's say green. So if we were to think about this axis, we could do a C2 about this axis. And uh, so FA would stay in the same spot. B would stay in the same spot, and FB would then rotate into FC and vice versa. So boron trifluoride actually has three C2 axes. So here's a C2, C2. So overall, we have one, two, three C2 axes, and then one C3 axis into the board like that. So there can be multiple rotational symmetry elements in the same molecule, so keep your eye out for that. And then, of course, these are all called a C axis. So C just means rotation, and again, N is basically the number of turns you need to make it all the way around to 360 degrees. Okay, so back to benzene. Um, what you can see is that benzene has a C6 down going into the board. So if we rotate A to B to C, that's we're rotating 60 degrees each time. So we could denote that maybe with like a little hexagon in the middle. So going into the board, we have a C6. And then, again, if you think about we could have C2s, right? So we could have a C2 axis here, C2. We could, you know, rotate A onto E, B onto D. So we have three C2 axes down all of these bonds. C2, C2. And then we can also have C2 axes in between the bonds as well. So this is getting kind of messy, but you can see that if we, in the board, we have a C2, we could then rotate C onto D, B onto E, uh, and then A onto F as well. So we have th three additional C2s that are in between all these um, all these carbon-carbon bonds. So overall, we have six C2s that are perpendicular to this central C6. So again, things can get kind of complicated, so be ready to identify rotational axes. OK, so a third type of symmetry element is a mirror plane. And the symbol for this is sigma. And then sigma, and then there's this subscript, which I'll kind of put like a box around here. And so. Uh, Basically, a mirror plane is when you have a molecule and then you just and you mirror itself. Maybe that's too obvious. So, for example, if we take, let's say, cyclopropane. So, cyclopropane here, and then you know here are my H's. H's one up, one down, one up, one down, one up, one down. Um, so these are kind of hard to draw. So we, I typically draw them as sort of a plane. You can either use dot dashed or whatever you have. But if you imagine that the, this triangle of cyclopropane makes a plane, we could then, like, so this is in the same plane as that triangle. Um, so this would be our sigma. And then so what we have is, 
if you have your HA and HB, they would then flip because those are up and down above the plane of the triangle, and then so they would then mirror themselves across. So there's a mirror plane here. Um, there are other mirror planes. For example, we could then draw a perpendicular mirror plane. Uh, so between this carbon and between this bond. So you can have this somewhat like, I'll try to draw it 3D. So here, this would mirror, in fact, if we have H A H B, H C H D, and then this would be C1, C2. This would uh, invert C1 and C2, so they would flip across. This carbon that goes through the mirror plane stays in the same spot, as does these hydrogens, and so they would mirror this way. And so there would be three of these, one through this carbon, one through this carbon, and one through this carbon. And then so when we want to label which the subscript of this, of the sigma, um, what we typically, the, the convention is, um, we th look at the highest, um, look for highest, uh, highest CN axis. If perpendicular, it's a sigma H. And then if parallel, it's a sigma V um, or a D. So sigma V for vertical. We'll talk about D for dihedral uh, in a bit. But for now, just consider them sigma Vs. And sigma H is, of course, for horizontal. So in this cyclopropane molecule, the highest rotational axis is C3 uh, into the plane where you, you, know, you rotate around. So I'll draw a triangle here. Here's my highest C3. So the first sigma mirror plane that we talked about, which is in the plane of the cyclopropane molecule, so the, the, the triangle, that is perpendicular to our C3, right? So here's my C3, I rotate in the plane, but my mirror plane is perpendicular to that. So this first one is the sigma H. And then these perpendicular ones are the sigma Vs because they are parallel to that central C3 axis. So in the same way, if we go back to benzene, we have a mirror plane perpendicular. So in the plane of the benzene, it's perpendicular to uh, that C6. And then so that's a sigma H. And then we have a bunch of sigma Vs that I'll leave it to you to find. And those are, those are, gonna, be per those are gonna be parallel to that C6 axis because six is the highest rotational axis that we have. Okay, um, let me do a quick erase and we'll finish up our um, symmetry elements. Okay, let's do it in this corner here. So the last symmetry element is improper rotations. And the notation here is S sub N. And so what this means is you first rotate, rotate by 2 pi over n, and then do a mirror plane oops, ah, perpendicular to rotation. Um, oh, and I'll also note that S2 has a special notation. So S2, if you, so if I were to rotate by 180 degrees and then flip it in that plane, this is known as inversion. And then this is also called I. So uh, that's just a special terminology that we'll talk a little bit about later and why it's important. So um, basically, uh, this is, looks like it's kind of complicated, but it's not really. Um, if you have a CN axis and a sigma H, then you have uh, SN. So if CN, sigma H exist, SN exists. And um, you could also have examples where you have neither, but SN could exist. So the one example we'll have is ferrocene. So ferrocene is cyclopentadienyl, the sandwich compound. And this has a C5 axis down here, C5. So, but in this case, the cyclopentadienyls can be staggered or eclipsed. So if they are eclipsed, 
I'll draw the eclipse formation. Looking down, um, looking down that C5 axis, the eclipsed conformation, you'll, all you'll see will be this five-fold, um, basically this pentagon. So then this would have uh, a sigma h perpendicular to the C5. And so, of course, you'd have the S5 if you wanted it. But there's another type of uh, conformation of this ferrocene molecule, and this is the staggered. So this is eclipsed. But if the cyclopentadienals are staggered, we'll have one pentagon, but the other one below it will be opposite. So I'll try to draw it in pink here. So here we're having this pointing down. We could also have a pentagon. I don't know. This is very hard to draw. I'll draw it in pink through it. OK. So here's my pentagon. The pink one is the bottom one. So here we still have the C5, but we no longer have the mirror plane, right? Because if we were in a mirror plane perpendicular to the C5, that blue would be in the same position, and it would not be in the same position as the pink pentagon. So because of this, we don't have the sigma H. So the question is, do we have the S5? Uh, no, but what we have is an S10. This has S10 symmetry elements. Because if we were to do first a rotation by 2 pi over 10, what happens is, let's say this vertex goes to here, and then we do the mirror, and then so it becomes the blue. So <laughs> it'll be easier with a model kit, so I highly recommend that you get a model kit um, to be able to visualize this. So um, the key part is, even though this molecule does not have C10 rotational symmetry or a sigma H, it can still have this S10 symmetry element. So anyway, these are our symmetry elements for five if you count inversion. And so these will be the ones that we will practice and you should expect to be able to know and find in all molecules when we treat them in class.